Hello ladies, my name is Jennifer Escalera and I am here with third eye goddess Julie Yvonne. Yay! And she is a Shaw woman, intuitive old soul healer, teacher, and spiritually minded. She's been in the healing art since 1971, but as her passion has been in this passion of her profession since 2009. She's been working with clients worldwide. So thank you, Julie, for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Goddess Jennifer. I'm so excited to be with you and just to share this space with you and all these other goddesses out there tuning in. Yeah, yeah. So I would love for you to share some of your experience and your wisdom as a woman who has been um, in relationships. And for some of us who have gone through our own trials and tribulations as myself, I wanted to get another goddess's uh, perspective experience on what relationships have been like for you, in particularly if you have ever had any um, resistance or just kind of a clash with, with guys because you're, um, you're strong-minded, you're willful, and because you are a healer, you're intuitive, and that could be intimidating for some guys. Um, yeah. We wanted to get your experience, uh, how you've gone around that, and, and what we can learn from you. Oh my gosh, I, I, I'm so excited. I think that I have been in every type of relationship with man, from the bad boy to the spiritual man, to all of them. And I would say having this gift of being intuitive, I had to keep people accountable. I couldn't like keep myself silent just for the sake of being in a relationship. And each relationship that I've been in has taught me more value, more love, more respect, and more loyalty towards myself. And most people say, oh, I wish that great relationship never happened. I'm so grateful of every experience that I've had because it's brought me to the place and to owning the title as a goddess. And I've been, I have no shame. I've been married. I've been divorced. And I've always been on this search for a relationship with someone that I felt would overstand me someone that I could allow myself to just be free with. They would accept me with my spirituality, my, my sexuality, my goddessness, my, the essence of me, and allowing themselves to just see me, intimacy. But into me, I wanted someone to see. And I realized, well, why am I looking for someone else to find those qualities in me when I have them right here? So mm -hmm. that's when I had to step out of myself and I went on this long sabbatical of celibacy, of complete ownership of myself, really making myself accountable for everything that hurt me, for every man that I allowed to hurt me, and asking the reasons why. Instead of putting the blame on someone else, I allowed myself to process everything, to feel everything that I needed to feel, and find out what the core issue was, why I was attracting the same type of men. And within that, I'm like, wow, this is really familiar. Until I realized, wow, I'm, I'm attracting men like my father that, are, that were spiritual, but didn't allow their lights to shine, wanted to always keep me on this level, but I was always a prized possession because I was cute and I was pretty and I was fun. I was all those things, but they still wanted to dim my light instead of helping me to brighten it and to build it up for myself. So being intuitive and dating men and telling them who I am, what I did, what I do for a living now, um, after being so spending so much time in entertainment as a celebrity makeup artist. I um, would just start saying, well, I'm a makeup artist still, or I'm a facialist, you know, instead of saying, well, I'm a healer and I am intuitive. And I noticed the members say, can you turn it off sometimes? Or they would pull back or they would just go ghost on me because the veil was lifted. There was nothing that I couldn't see, but I realized that in all the relationships with these men that I've, I have had over the years, They've each told me years later how I've changed their life. 
how I made them a better man, how I kept them accountable, and how they're now in successful and beautiful relationships, not only with themselves, but their mothers, their sisters, and the women that they call their wives and their lovers. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's been an amazing journey to get to where I am today. And even being in a beautiful relationship, when I realized coming out of my sabbatical and out of celibacy and complete abstinence, it's like, this is the person that I am. There's no baggage except when I travel with my weekender and my makeup bag. Right. I needed someone that could appreciate the arts, not just the healing arts, but also visual arts, music. Somebody that saw me outside of this physical part of me that actually wanted to take the time to be acquainted with my soul. Yes. Yeah. And that they'd been hurt in past relationships so much that they knew what it was like. So they wanted to try something different and be accountable, be open, listen, talk, learn, and explore this journey. So if I had to go back and repeat any of those relationships to get to where I am today, it will be well worth the journey again. But I just use the wisdom that I've gained over the years. Yeah. And it's really Oh my gosh, yes. And I just had ooh, I just had chills like all over me right now. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, but it's um I think that love is something that we, we must learn for ourselves, especially as women, because we wear so many hats. We're sister, we're daughter, we're we're a friend, we're a girlfriend, we're a wife, we're lovers, we're mothers, we're career women. But where do we find the balance in all of these things? Right, right. And it's just taking complete ownership with ourselves. So how did you, how did you go from that core of transformation? I know for a lot of my clients who are still struggling with that transformation, they're still in the fear-based mode. What can you suggest or maybe some healing um, exercises where they could gently begin that transformation from fear into fearless. I would, for, for me and for a lot of my clients that I see, I said the first step is taking the time to find what that core issue is, like really being honest. And I believe that journaling and writing and ritual work yeah. is the best thing for women to do. And it's hard for people to write. So I said, if you can't write it, at least speak it out to yourself acknowledge it change certain um taglines or phrases or words that you use like i don't know no don't don't come up from a place of i don't know because it's truly that we do know but it comes from a place of fear because we don't know we don't want to face it because it's almost like reliving these moments in our lives over and over again instead of coming from a place of just saying you know what this is my life this is where i am and i choose me those three words are so simple. I choose me. I choose me. Yeah. And from that moment, when you choose yourself, you've already taken ownership of this temple that you call your body. And it's a part of your mind. It is part of your spirit. It's a part of your soul. And the way that you've been spending all this time and energy loving other people and looking for the validation of love, go to a mirror mm -hmm. and see it stare back at you. And you can clip your wings and you can learn how to fly. And that's to first love yourself. Because when we love ourselves, when we take that, the risk of letting go of the fear, we step into a place of love. And then from that moment, you start taking these different steps to the higher ground. And it's surrendering to something that is so much bigger than you. Where you start loving yourself. The foundations that you set for anything, it's going to be based on loyalty because you're being loyal and honest to yourself. And that way you can be the mirror and give that same love and loyalty to someone else. Yeah. And within that, you're also going to have respect for yourself. So any relationship that you have from your business relationships, your personal relationships, um, with your partners, um, with your family, your friends, they all must operate on that same frequency. And with that respect that you have and that loyalty that you have, you're always going to equal love. And it starts at home with you. So it's taking a breath, acknowledging what hurts you. To stop allowing yourself to play, 
stop, we teach. That's what we do in our minds. And we keep going over it and going over it because words are so powerful. And I think that words hurt us more than the, a physical hit. Yeah, right. And we have to ask ourselves, why are these words affecting me? Why, am I, why is it that a trigger for me? And then before you know it, you're getting down to the core of what that issue is. And then you can go in there and you can grab that cord that's been keeping you bound and stuck and just idled along this journey and cut it. So spiritual healing, sound healing, Reiki, crystal healing, um, meditation, and even kundalini yoga yeah. is a beautiful start. That's because great. it teaches yes. you how to breathe. Yep. It teaches you how to allow yourself to align with all the four elements of this planet to connect with your center, your core as to who you are. And you really feel grounded and centered and anything else is crazy around you. You can still come to a place that just peace and calm. Absolutely. And I don't believe that God placed any of us on this planet to be alone. You know, so we must find a common ground in order to work with ourselves and to be able to love and work with our partners. Just because we're in a relationship, we still have to do the work on ourselves with our partners and also allowing our, ourselves a time out to just reflect, to ask ourselves the questions. How am I showing up in this world? What, how am I utilizing this gift of my life and sharing my light with others? You know, so there's so many different things, but I say first it starts with the breath and acknowledgement and surrendering to something and really truly letting go of fear. Because if we live our life in fear, we're never going to experience and live the life that we're, we're destined to live. Absolutely. And yes. And, and it takes us on this amazing journey. And throughout this journey, we get to discover all these paths in our life. You know, so many of us thought that when we grow up, I want to be this, I want to be a, a, a makeup artist, or I want to be a therapist, or whatever it is. But later on in our lives, we find that that door is open, but we're taking these different paths, but it all still comes back to home or where we find our passion. Absolutely. Yes. And, so, uh -huh. Oh, please. Um, so when you, when you moved from the um the stage of working on yourself and then starting to date or just starting to open your heart to the potential of meeting someone how how much of fear or your self-esteem was still something that you were working through or was it completely gone by the time you said by the time you surrendered and you said yes i want to meet someone Wow. Um, I waited until I knew that I was 100. Yeah. And nothing affected me. And I have this new sense. Like, I've always been confident, but I would say I was overconfident because I was compensating for that fear. Yeah. Fear of rejection, the fear of, like, I'm not pretty enough and I'm not this and I'm not that. Until I started looking at myself like, you know what? You are all that. Because I said, if we don't toot our own horns, who will? Right. You know? It's like we are the warriors and the goddess in our own tribe. And that's why we draw like-minded people. So even though I was pretending, I was wearing a mask. I wasn't being honest with myself. And I realized that these are the people that I'm attracting. I don't like this. So I'm like, I need to be real with me. And I need to allow people to see my light and not cast a shadow to let this negative, funky, murky, sticky, ugly vampire energy keep coming into my life. I got tired of turning the same corners expecting to see a different piece of art in front of me. Yeah. You know, it was always the same thing. And so once I realized, you know what, I'm at a crossroads here. I can go left or I can go right. And so what felt right to my intuition, that's where I moved through. And I kept saying it's a daily mantra, a daily um, affirmation for myself. I am loved. And the yeah. person that is out there in this universe just chilling and waiting for me, he's close. Because I felt this pull and I felt like the more love I was receiving. And I realized that I had to go back to my past. My past was on me. And the faster I was trying to get away from it, it sped up. Yeah. At that moment, I realized, wow, this is not about me. 
So all these relationships that I was in, they saw my light. I just couldn't see it for myself. And that's why they had to make me feel like they felt. And once I realized that I was a master of my own mind and I could play Jedi mind tricks, but they were based on good karma, Yoda and I became really good friends. (laughs) And I, I realized that love started with me it was my loyalty of self it was my overstanding it was my vulnerability and it was me planning epic moments in my life that now are no longer a dream they're actual reality because I said to myself if you're all of these things and you want someone out there there's someone out there for you that is going to build you up from where you already have built yourself up even higher, that's going to like what you do and support what you do, but not be a part of what you do. So I can have my own unique identity and have something great to talk about and to also teach my partner what I require. And I needed to know that they were on that same frequency with me so we could have a beautiful relationship because we operated on that same channel. And it's just by being the perfect example in the mirror of what I am. And I see who he is. Yeah. By still recognizing that I am, I'm a goddess and you are God to me. You are my king. Yeah. And I, I didn't know, I didn't need, I wanted someone that I could take these keys to my soul and yeah. throw them and say, catch it. Because that's how much I trust you because I trust myself and I know that I can trust you too. And listening to my intuition and and using this mantra, like he's going to be a beautiful soul, a beautiful light. He's going to understand me. He's going to teach me how to love myself better than I already do. And I think I'm doing a pretty good dang job of it. He's going to be the perfect example. And he's going to remind me why it never worked out for anybody else because he showed up and he's a king. He's talking about it and he's doing it. And he has me right there at his side. And he sees me as a goddess and I don't have to prove myself because he already knows who I am because he chose me and he chose himself too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's just allowing yourself to create and, and set the intention on really what you want, that you want to heal. You have to say, not that I don't know, or I'm not sure. It's like, you have to be in a complete place of saying, I am knowing, even if you don't know what the heck that is yet, it's just programming your mind to think, I am knowing, I'm feeling, I'm doing it. I'm taking a, taking a chance every day and mm-hmm. allow people to see your light and to see your beauty and not hide. Be your authentic and your beautiful self. And we mm-hmm. all love a bad boy, but you can have a bad boy with good man qualities. That's right. Very true. Very true. <laughs> so take us, take us into the now, you know, what, what are your experiences now in a relationship and how do you keep it going? How do you nurture it? And how do you still continue to be your goddess self in the relationship? By truly speaking what I feel from a place of love, from allowing myself to be vulnerable and to learn to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your story. Thank you for allowing me to love you on this part of the journey of my life. And everything that I've gone through, I always tell my partner that he is the true essence of why I feel at this point of my life that I have wind beneath my wings. Aww. And and the person that I'm dating now was someone that I dated 20 years ago. Oh wow! That that hurt my heart. That broke my heart. That left me standing there like, what just happened? But throughout this whole journey, I always wondered where he was, what he was doing, and. I had to come from a place like, I'm not angry with you. Wow, thank you. Because without that experience, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I kept putting it out there to the universe. Like, wherever he is, you know, um, I just hope that he's happy. And I hope that he's experiencing love like I'm experiencing love in my life today. 
And lo and behold, um, even being married and all these things, he was one of those persons where I'm like, wow, you, you are my soulmate. Mm. And the light that I saw in him then is the same light that I see in him today, only it's a reality because he's living it. He's had the experience along his journey to actually be that man that he is today. And it's been amazing and it's been beautiful and it's been healing. And I'm like, this is what love is. This is what relationships in. And I believe everybody deserves a second chance, especially if they step up and they say, you know what, I'm doing this. And I'm, I'm letting go of my ego. I'm letting go of everything that I've ever felt fear in because I love you and I want to be here. And we have to come to a place of deciphering the difference between our wants and our needs. Because if we're still needing something, then that means we have some more work to do. But if we're wanting something, it's like we're feeling it in every part of us. Yeah. We know that we deserve it. We know that we're going to be able to step into it, embrace it, nourish it, feed it, give it whatever it needs so we can continue to watch it grow and create these legacies to continue that love that we created. If it's a child, uh, whatever it is, you know, because once we establish that heart connection with someone, it's not a cord that can be cut. It can only be nourished no matter where they are in this life here in the physical realm or in spirit realm. It's that connection still really real. And those are the type of connections that we need to make with ourselves. It's yeah. almost a soul contract that we must honor for ourselves and say, I am love. I am open to this. I'm open to learning. And it's hard to be in a friendship. So it's just as hard to be in a relationship with someone. But they have to be your friend first. And don't get caught up in the illusion that so many women do. And I used to be one of them. Sex is not love. Yeah. You know, just because you're in that intimate moment, it's not love. Um, if someone can tell you they love you all day, but it's love is an action word. Yeah. It must have balance to it. It has to have some substance, you know, and even to this day, I still love my bad boy, but, and I'll never, and I'll never be completely detoxed from them because they used to be that guy and I used to be that girl. Yeah, we're we're bad. Excuse me, we're bad. A S S S men and women. We yeah. rule this world, and and it goes full circle. So I tell people, don't be mad that a relationship happened, even if it was ugly and toxic. Find some beauty in it. What did you learn from it? How has it made you? How how have you grown from it? Right. Matured. That's the most important thing. What did it teach you? Right. Right. I think what comes to me right now, and, and we'll close up in a, in a few, um, is the word of if you can find, if you can move away from the bad boy to the badass, you know, that, that feels very powerful. Like, I want a badass dude. Like, I want this guy to rock my world. And I want to be a badass chick, you know, or a badass goddess. And I think if we could take that in, I'm even giving, getting chills. So that's my truth. Yeah. Um, I think if, if women can get themselves into that reprogramming of, I don't want to just be with those bad boys. I want to be a, with a badass, you know, someone who yeah. just really can take my keys and surrender, you know, yeah. and, and they do the same to us. They give us their keys. Yeah. And we open doors and, and we open doors to each other and new doors amongst other doors as the relationship evolves and grows you know it's, it's it becomes its own universe when you have these two souls together and the the fire that ignites when you really find someone who is really compatible with you so true yeah it's true yeah you know? and we we almost we, we have to acknowledge our partners by just saying you know what thank thanking them you know it's like what they've taught us and it's like i'm not i'm not looking for a fairy tale anymore you know i want someone that's loyal you we we should want someone that's loyal someone that's tired of getting it wrong um where you can say I earn my own money, so I don't need money from you. 
you know, we can help each other out, but yes. you want, um, at the end of the day, you want to look forward to seeing your partner and sharing your life with them. You want to get excited when you see them and you want to be, I, I, I look at my, my partner and I look at him and I'm like, you know what, looking at you and having you back in my life, all the tears that I cried then were worth it because the tears that I cried now are simply based on joy. Yeah. They are based on fulfillment. They are based on, dang it. I never, I never in a million years would have thought that I would have been blessed with the type of relationship that I had, but I wished for it and I asked for it and I didn't know that it would be my past that would come back to bring me so much pleasure where it was once a place of pain. So it really, really, it, it's helped both of us to say, wow, this is really beautiful. This is a beautiful thing that we have here. So what I wish for everyone is to believe in the fairy tale that you created with your own mind, your own beauty, your own story, and create something epic. And let go of fear, because fear will only keep you stuck and stifled and keep walking on the same path where you want to start a new journey. And we're all worth it. We're all worth it. Beautifully said, Julie. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom. I mean, this is thank you. Just epic. I love that. You know, it, it really is an epic experience once you can surrender and open your heart and let go of the fear, let go of your past or heal your past. Yeah. Heal your old loved ones so that you can finally be truly in your your truth, your authentic self, your highest self, so that you can find someone who's going to nurture that with you. Yes. So yes. thank you so much, Julie. And how can uh, we continue um, learning about you or things that you're up to? How can we connect with you? Well, definitely, I am on social media. Uh, my Facebook is Julie Yvonne Washington, Third Eye Goddess. My business is The Healing Room, and I can be reached at uh, third Eye Goddess, um, Julie Yvonne, and that's Yvonne is with an E, at gmail.com. And of course, you can always look me up on my website, which is www.thehealingroom.us. Not .com, but .us. So I wish each and every one of you blessings, love, and peace, and well wishes on this journey. And Thank you for allowing me to be a part of yours because it's a time that we can never get back. And I hope that with my words and your words, Jennifer, that we've left a huge mark already. So yeah. here's the bad boy detox. Thank <laughs> you. Awesome. All right. Ache. I'll see you later. See you. Bye. Bye.